Okay guys, we're here today with my friend Art down here in Southern Illinois. I told you I'd show you his 58 Chevy and some of his other cars. So we finally got a nice day. Satan's not beating down on us like he has been. He, He's coming back next week. Yeah, Monday, I think. Yeah, so I want to show you guys this 58 Impala that Art has had since what, 1977. 1977, he bought this car. It was sold new right here in town from a, a woman and I guess she died. Yeah. And you bought it off her sister or something, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I ended up having to work on it. That's why I knew about it. It always lost air and I had to work on the back or on the air pressure. Yeah, see this car is one of, do we even know how many with air factory air ride suspension? They, they recalled them about four years later, and people, they converted to coil springs, and she said there's nothing wrong with the ride. <laughs> so she wanted to leave it the way it was. And uh, she used to go to the Chevy garage here in town, A.H. Bird, and uh, they just wanted to uh, convert it to coil springs, and she said no, but she paid hundred and twenty three dollars and seventy five cents for that option and there's nothing wrong for the ride so she paid for that much for that option huh um did she order this or did she buy it off a lot i mean it was the showroom model of uh ah berg it Chevrolet. was on the showroom floor yeah and he huh. was good on putting all the accessories on it where he got i think it was uh sixty percent on profit on it and the car was only 22 percent so he liked to deck them out yeah i'd say so and how many miles are on it now it's got thirty-seven thousand actual miles Thirty-seven thousand actual miles and all original paint all right. original interior right <laughs> and i kn i've known art for many years um you guys are really going to like his collection but I mean, he's had this car ever since I can remember. So in 77, I was nine years old <laughs> when Art bought this car. And so I know he's had it all this time. And I remember for many years, it was sitting in the garage, you know, basically down on the ground because the air suspension was, was messed was up. Yeah, the bellows and, and he just couldn't find them. And didn't you find some in Florida at one time? Yeah, I had them and they gave out. Well, one blew out the level air valve. Uh, the that uh, monitors the uh, air or the level uh the the lever bust or fell off the sp it's got a spring huh. and uh it uh blew out the bellow so i had to restore it again and it I, evidently you can't get it from chevy and you couldn't they didn't have that huh. accessory and i ended up getting a bellows for for 65 mercedes that fit on there a 65 mercedes bellow that's yeah. what's on it and is it on all four corners just two I, just I, just the rear yeah the, just the front oh it's but but does it have bellows on all four corners yes i thought it did yeah but i the back ones there's no weight in the trunk according to what the front made right wear out quicker and it actually has a compressor under the hood that we'll look at that, that pumps it up. So let's get this thing off the tripod and walk around it and talk a little bit, a little bit more. All right, so let's walk around this thing and talk a little bit about it. And I just, I can't get over how absolutely everything on it is meant for, how old is it? 65, 65, 65 years. years old and nothing's really been touched on it. You added the fender skirts. Yeah. Did you add those right away or because they're not uh, an exact match? Yeah, pretty, pretty close. I think it maybe it was 79 or 80 when I put them on. <laughs> so even the dual rear antennas, the dealer had ordered it like that, huh? Yeah. That's the way it was sitting on the and showroom the, floor. The mirrors, you know, I got the box that you know, Chevy box that they come in with. That's a deluxe mirrors and they had them on the front fender and they had a template where they put them 
and uh, you know it was the thing even Ford's had the fence or the mirrors in front that's right yeah it was style then and actually they work better if you got a car on your side of the door on these new cars it feels like uh, you know sometimes you think it's clear and it isn't right because but they actually those mirrors if you get set right they they they're helpful mm -hmm. you can see when you want to pass but the only problem is they're they aren't remote no cable oh really you just gotta get out there and adjust <laughs> them and get back in and make yeah. sure you're right <laughs> well that come along a few years later yeah remote so boy the even the wheel covers on this car, they just look brand new. Still have the original black in the flags on them. Now, your wife has claimed this car, hasn't she? Yeah, she did until <laughs> it didn't work anymore. And then she... <laughs> well, I'm sure she wants it back now. <laughs> yeah, she even had a, a, coat or ja or a sweater jacket and had the guy take a picture of it and put on it jacket <laughs> wow uh, here's another thing you, people are amazed by that is uh, it's got a tissue holder yeah that was kind of a common thing back then they i wouldn't say common but you you do see them they, that as an option on a lot of vehicles but, the tissue holder but they don't have that option now <laughs> oh no uh-uh <laughs> Listen how those doors close. Sounds brand new. Now this lady didn't even hardly drive the car to work or anything. She walked to work, didn't she? Yeah, I had. She, she had, worked at the bank or something. Yeah, she walked probably three blocks. She'd never get it out on a rainy day, or she always had an umbrella and walked to work. Mm-hmm. And that had nineteen thousand when I bought it. Nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand miles. And where are we at now? Thirty. What, what did we say? Thirty-seven thousand. Now, I may get attacked for this, but personally, I always thought the 58 Chevy was a nicer looking car than the 57 Chevy. It was longer and sleeker. And uh, lower. To and the lower, car. yeah. I just think that, that this, they really outdid themselves they, when they... They didn't... It was a one year only. Yeah. You know. Right. Anything you buy with it is set, you know, you can't... It's you know, like the Tri 55, 56, 57. A lot of those was interchangeable. But. Right. We'll put the microphones back on just in case you guys weren't hearing us well enough. And like Art mentioned too, that this car actually has to even some Corvette styling. Yeah. In the body lines. Yeah. And uh, that was the first year for the Impala. Yeah, that's true. First year for the Impala. And everybody knows me that I'm a Ford guy, but I was not, <laughs> well, I'm, I wasn't a fan of the 58 <laughs> Ford. I, I don't know anyone really that was a fan of the 58 yeah, Ford. That was. But the, but the 58 Chevy has always remained iconic, really. Yeah. It's popular now, too. <laughs> and really, I, I guess it was the first year for the, the three taillights on each side, yeah. and they carried that for a long time. Yeah. Well, through 65, anyway, yeah. and then 66, they went to the... To, right, this... To the, what do you say, I guess the... Red lens all the yeah, way. Yeah, like the... Oh, you know, kind of a squared off, and yeah. then went all wrapped around the corner. And that... There's oh, it even says level, level air. air on it, so they were proud of that. Was this the only year they did that in the 50s? And then they had so much trouble with it, they didn't do it then in 59? or? Well, they they had, I think, 59 was the last year for it. And they went to Coil Springs. Then. Yeah. I would say that most people took them up on the recall. Yeah. <laughs> And, and she did, <laughs> and she know. just flat refused, and there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, she didn't drive hers like everybody else. Yeah, well, <laughs> she just took a well, it was a Texaco station next door, and 
she just took it over there and he had to do the oil work and yeah the oil change and that but she didn't trust Chevy Garage. She was wanting to change it to Coil Springs. <laughs> and what color is that called? Colonial cream. Colonial yeah. cream with a white top and what do we call that interior? Actually the interior is kind of a multicolor. Yeah, it's a green. Colonial cream exterior. Kind of a green, not really a turquoise. Man, just all the chrome work in this car is also bright and pit free, original headliner. That that seat, that rear hand seat, that fold comes up, otherwise you can shove it down and it's the, Oh, that'll just kind of go yeah, down for like a yeah. third passenger. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. It pops up. Yeah, I see that. I don't remember that about this car. That's pretty neat. An armrest for two passengers in the center, or if you need a third person, yeah. it folds down. Yeah. That was pretty creative. Man. It just looks brand new still. And I suppose that is the original instructions up there on the sun visor. Yeah. How to drive that turbo glide. It never Yeah, it shifts. doesn't really shift, does it? It's no, kind it of like a centrifugal turbine. force yeah. type transmission. Yeah. And was that pretty common in these? Turbo glide, they called it. And uh, well, they came from a power glide to turbo glide. And, you know, they had a little problem with that. People was acting. They had a Ford and they put it in low. You know, you get a little mm -hmm. extra. Yeah. <laughs> zip and uh people was doing that and that's got a grade retarder on it for huh. low range and that's about 20 mile an hour is top speed on that hmm. then what engine does it have in it it's got the 348 cubic inch 348 those were known to be pretty powerful too weren't yeah they? That was the biggest one engine you could get. Still has the original insulation up underneath the hood too. Yeah. It's a miracle a mouse hasn't found that. Yeah. Well, I kind of watch for it. Yeah. I know you've got a good storage, but even back then, really, you know, because she had a carport she kept it in, didn't she? No, it was or her she, house she did garage. She actually did have a garage. Okay. And this here is your, you got to put uh uh brake cleaner to keep the moisture out of the lines and the oh for reason. the air ride yeah and there's the compressor hmm. here's the air tank okay uh, this here's the compressor yeah and this and, is the tank yeah and it about 200 pounds pressure it puts in, in there is this relay, has this got something to do with it? Yeah. I forget. There isn't. Or is. I, I don't know for sure. Or would that be a voltage regulator and something else? Yeah. I don't know. But the power steering pump is in back of the generator, which is pretty rare, too. It works. The power steering pump turns off the back of the generator. Right. And look at that, Delco Remy, 12 volts. <laughs> and it's got, you know, power brakes on it. Yeah, power brakes. Power steering, which... I don't know how a person could even put a price on a car like this. Well, I've had a person, ask, or one wanted it, he sold a 63 vet, and he had the cash. And I was going to sell it, but after I got the air bellows working, changed out. But got the, our the bad thing about it is tag that, back here. Yeah, the if you you know if you have ten, over ten thousand cash, and he had cash, but for me to check the whether well, it was legal, oh, I got some polish on it, but. Uh, a little bit of overspray of polish. Yeah. <laughs> Do 
kind of the, the, the little two front bullet marker lights, turn signals, whatever, yeah. kind of mimic the rear. Yeah. There's just two instead of three. And the only one that's used for the blinker. <clears throat> and these uh, license, I think they want $200 for them now. What's the, that? The license plate holder. Oh, is that a Chevy thing? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's got the bow tie on it. You mean if you find one like on eBay or something, they yeah. bring 200 bucks? Wow. And I imagine those were on there when she got it, huh? Yeah. That is some vehicle. It's, it's just so crazy that that original paint has survived all these years like that. I didn't see too much out garage outside. You know, was That's true. It's always been inside. This is such a nice touch here. Yeah. Is this where the exhaust comes out? No. No, that's just a chrome ornament. Just an but ornament. There's some people that cut that out and oh. had the tailpipes, but. Don't do that. No. <laughs> Here's the original bill of sale. Oh, I tell you, that knee just don't work too good yet. There it is, the original bill of sale. Sweet old lady. Maybe power last... brakes. I don't have my glasses on, but is that power brakes? Does that say, what, 3770? Yeah. That's all the options she mm -hmm. had or he put on there. Air suspension. Yeah. $123.75. I mean, they even charged for the, uh, got the oil filter. That was all extra. Push button radio. Mm -hmm. Turbo thrust motor. What, what made that? That's the turbo glide that they put on the expensive or Impala. Oh, okay. Yeah, push button radio back then, $84. That was a lot of money. Yeah. For an accessory back then. Power steering, $69.95. Turbo glide transmission, $231.35. White wall tires, $31.55. Two-tone paint, $21.55. What is this easy, easy eye, That's easy a, eye glass? Is that like a like tinted, a tinted glass? Yeah, thirty-seven fifty. Anyway, the car comes out. Let's see. She traded in an Oldsmobile of some sort. Fifty-four. Super, Fifty-four Oldsmobile, Super eighty-eight four door. Her, so I guess the total on this car was thirty-five hundred eighty-four dollars and sixteen cents, and after the trade-in and Everything was done, $3,584 and 16 cents. She got that 54 O's cost her, or she got 1974.66 trade in value. Yep, that's what's on here. Well, ain't that something? But her husband passed away, I think, it was in 50. Three and she just that's one of the reasons she traded in for new 58 Chevy. <laughs> wow, that she was didn't you know it reminded her of her husband, so right. You know, even the rubber is still so soft, doesn't have a crack in it. Now, usually the Chevys, you have to slam them doors after they get off. I know, especially <laughs> in the 70s. If you open the door on a Chevy, the window would fall in three inches. Got a spacious trunk. Well, that is a big trunk. 
you get quite a few people in the drive-in back then. Especially if you stacked them. Yeah. Still got the sticker up there. How to use the jack. Yep. Is that by chance the original spare tire? I don't know. You drive pretty good distances yeah, I with so this. Sure some I, shows. I uh, got five. Those white ball tires are pretty hard to get certain numbers for them. Yeah. Well, you want to take her for a little ride? Yeah, we can. All righty. I'll, uh, I'll film you backing it out so people can see it moving. Nothing even really dividing this two-tone paint as far as chrome or anything. Just masked off. Even the hood closes solid, not a rattle. All the emblems and everything in this car, just everything looks brand new. Is It looks like it's got all original four headlights. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they have to have that T3 emblem oh. on there. Yep. I was trying to decide if you guys could hear us better with the microphones on or off, but we left them on. So I wanted to be sure that you could hear what Art's talking about. Maybe when we get in there, or when we get back, maybe we can listen to the engine run. Let's go around the block, if you don't mind. Starts right up, don't it? Oh, yeah. Does the radio still work? Yeah, it did. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. Um, it's funny how those all those old GM fuel gauges moved around. Yeah. Even up through the 70s, you go around one corner and you got an empty tank and you go around another corner and it's full. Well, that radio does work. Listen to that. And it's probably never been out of there, I suppose. <laughs> I think the fuse, the clock, I took the fuse out because after it runs a while, the battery's dead. Yeah. A little bit of an exhaust leak up there somewhere. Yeah. It's a, the, I don't know what, the manifold that restricts it from coming up. Yeah. Got the old day and night beer. Yeah. Here's a turbo glide transmission. It's not lacking any power, is it? No, it's. I've had it up to 
up to 120 after I got the air barrels <laughs> on me. Oh, really? 120 after he got the air barrels fixed. Check them out. So it never shifts. That's so strange. Yeah. You just Back turbine this up. Yeah. Kind of like an old mini bike I had with yeah. a centrifugal <laughs> clutch. <laughs> yeah, I got one of them for the grandkids. Lawnmower garage. But... Yeah. No cracks in the steering wheel. It's clearly been inside its whole life. Had a dash lost this padding, but. Oh, a little bit, but. Yeah. It's not cracked. But the problem is, you know, you, a lot of that stuff is hard to get, and if you can find it, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Is this Chevy bow tie? Is that your high beam indicator? Yeah. Thirty-seven thousand seven hundred and fifty-seven miles. Wasn't there something about these that you could? Yeah. If you put the key, take yeah. it out, and you could always not. A, you didn't have to have a key no. after. Yeah. See, yep. It still shuts off, but to lock it, you have to. Yeah, have you have key. to have a key to relock it. Huh. Power brake on the pedal. Wow. What's that little lever up there on beside the emergency brake? Oh, this in here? Yeah. That's your pump for your windshield washer. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, you pump it and it squirts the water out. That's a new one on me. <laughs> wow. You guys hear that? That little pedal right there is for your windshield washer. So it, I think it's even got a Chevy. Oh, wow. It says Chevrolet on that mirror right here. So that was put on there day one. Yeah. Huh. Man, I bet there's not another 58 Chevy around with that the air ride. Yeah, with the air ride, and that's this original and untouched. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't think. I don't think. I don't know, Benny. No. Very hard to even find a 58 Impala because mm -hmm. people thought Bel Air was the top of the line when they bought a 58 Chevy. Right, and, then, and actually that was the Impala, well, yeah, the, the, a, the new top of the yeah. line. Yeah. People was used to, Bel Air was the top of the line on a Chevy, but then they... Mm -hmm. I'd sure think that this car, really, like I said, I don't know how you could put a price on it, but it almost seems like it ought to be sitting in the lobby at GM World Headquarters <laughs> in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> they would probably get by or have it in the lobby. Yeah. Man. Some car. Well, we'll walk around it one more time. Look how it's got this. Wind, wind. Well, the sun is sh shining the lettering through here on the door. It shows up really good. Yeah. Yep, nobody's had their arm on this door she never had any kids uh -uh. well that makes a big difference well i think she did have a son but he was in oklahoma ah i bought it he was one that taken to Tulsa and he was having that shitty garage but Buy it. What's that? The Chevy garage would buy the car if it was delivered. And uh, to deliver, I don't know how you do air ride suspension because it loses the metals, loses air. Yeah. And there's no way you have to have. I think they had a deal where you could put two by four in the suspension in the frame to boom it down. Oh yeah, probably so. Yeah. He's talking about tying the car down to ship it with that air ride suspension. How they had, like they put a two by four in it to strap it down onto trucks to ship them. So, 
Well, Art, thanks for talking with us about this car. I really appreciate it, and we'll talk about some more of them. I don't think that anything's going to quite top this one, although I like your 55 Ford. Yeah. <laughs> and I like everything you got, really. I think you guys are going to really like Art's collection. We'll get through them, but the first one today is this 58 Impala. Can I see that air ride under here, you think? If I was to show them, you, can I see a uh, bellow? Yeah, if you want to get down that low, it's got, where the springs are, it's got rubber air bellows. Yeah, there you guys go. There's a, a bellow for the air ride on a 58 Chevy Impala. And it looks like that power steering was like a, a rack and pinion yeah. back then. So, that's pretty neat. What's that? I don't know if you could see the back better or not. But, uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, they're pretty far up there, but we can see them. I know they're a pain to put in. I bet. He said those bellows are a pain to put in. I had to uh, drop the whole A assembly to get that bellow in there. Wow. And you have to uh, rope sometimes on a new bellow, but the old bellows, to get them off, they, they're, they're hard to get off. They're like... Yeah. It, it's like a tubeless rim tire. It don't have no clamps. It has to fit in there and then it seals. Well, I'm glad after all these years you finally figured out something that'll work and those are probably ready, readily available. Yeah. Did you buy spares? No. <laughs> I got a couple of spares in the garage that I kept. But, uh, That's good. It, uh, those bellows are kind of expensive too. Yeah. The Mercedes is one that they 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 attend to their old cars. Right, right. And uh, a lot of people restore them. Yep. And I was lucky to find them. Yeah, that's very <laughs> true. I mean, I was I had them. Oh, well, I think that was. Uh, 20 years ago, I replaced all the bellows, and uh, they were sort of like, they wasn't made. They had special handmade, and they didn't have no no support. They were like two-ply versus four-ply tires. Right, right. Kind of like toilet paper. You yeah. don't want a chintz on it. <laughs> Well, all right, guys, there you go. That's my buddy Art's 58 Chevy Impala with 37,000 original miles that he bought in 19, what did we say, 77? I think it was 77. 1977. So stay I, tuned for some more of his collection. I got bellows if you want to take a picture. I got the old bellows there. If you want. Oh, he wants to show us the bellows. Let's go look at the bellows. We got neighbors over here mowing anyway. So here's one of the bellows that Art's talking about. Here's one that blew out. Oh, wow. That's why I didn't get the metal air really. I mean, just think, that has to take a lot of pressure, I didn't think. Oh, yeah. But, so this is really just kind of like a balloon? Yeah. Here's what it looks like when it's... Uh oh. Here's one of the bellows that I replaced. That fits in the cone of that. So that's already been in the car? Yeah. And uh, it's still good. Yeah. But I wanted to have it match when I put both two on it. Mm hmm. But that has to seal inside that metal cone. Yeah. You know, honestly, air ride suspension hasn't even really improved that much in today's cars. You still no. have trouble with them. Yeah, you got to have that 
it's actually uh, building a shock. Yeah. It isn't separate. Uh, right. Yeah, my 89 town car has air shocks on the back yeah. for load leveling, and I've never had a problem with those. But anytime you've got these airbags, even on the town cars, you know, it's it's going to cause you problems if yeah. you're going to have it, especially in our climate. If yeah. you're going to be driving it in the winter and all the elements and stuff like that, you're going to have problems. But so I got a couple of spares. So yeah, and it's certainly not going to hurt. None there had a hole in it, and I had them patch it. <laughs> like a tire. Yeah, and it worked. <laughs> yeah, I bet it did. <laughs> Well, here's a little sneak peek of what's coming up here, guys. We've got a Thunderbird over there. We've got a 64 Plymouth. Let me turn the lights on. Yeah, you could turn the lights on. We can give them a quick walk through. Yeah, so here's a 64 Plymouth. That was my first new car. <clears throat> yeah, and what is that, a 62 or 3 Bird? Three. 63 Bird, and this was your father's Chrysler, wasn't it? And, that's and that was your grandpa's Chrysler. You've got a Jag here. You've got a... Pontiac convertible back there and you're 55. So we've got some cars to talk about. Yeah. So this year is the wife's 98 Jag. Yep. I remember when she got that. She no won't let me get rid of it, but I could use the shed room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That there Plymouth I got. We'll talk about this one in another video. Let's okay. wrap this one here up. So there it is, guys. Arts 58 Impala. I'm pretty sure you guys are going to like it. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about that and stay tuned for the rest of this collection. Thanks for watching. Let me show you guys one more thing. I just, I just love the thought that went into all these old cars, how everything was unique, the way it worked. Look how this rear window goes up, tilts up, and then slides all the way forward like that. And it's so smooth, it feels brand new. I'd like to see a power one in action. I just wanted to point that out.